Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons. In the last episode we set up our first four Vulcanus and we also fixed some of our existing blast furnaces that we have here. We also improved our circuit automation by crafting up 15 more IV circuit assemblers and we once again added some more bees to supplement our blazing pyrothium production. And then finally we also had a look at the next stages in progression by crafting up an IV scanner. We'll need this for the assembly line process which is a project I would like to get to today. I'm not certain that we're going to get it all crafted today, but we'll definitely give it our best shot. So I think because of our potential lack of resources, we're going to focus on ore processing upgrades first, and then we'll look at the assembly line. Um, and we're also going to look at some things I've been putting off for a couple of episodes. One of those things being a chemical called advanced glue. And this is mainly used to craft graphene dust, which is then crafted into graphene wire, and 4x graphene wire crafts into the electric motor at IV. So yeah, it's a very relevant chemical at this stage of the game, and I think pretty important that we have automated before we move into LUV. Um, it's not super difficult to put together though, I've just been putting it off in favour of some other higher priority projects. But um, yeah, as I said, I did work on this between episodes, and this is basically how it went. So this chain for advanced glue consists of 5 machines, 1 mixer and 4 large chemical reactors. Crafting mixers and LCRs at this point is very simple because of all the automation we now have in our base. It didn't take long to put the machines together and I laid out the outlines for the multi-blocks as they were being crafted and connected power lines to each stage. All the machines here are running at EV power, so pink aluminium cable for each. I found some recipes that we were missing in applied energistics, so I added those now that we have the molecular assemblers. Then we just had to add all the hatches and ensure we have the channels available to manage fluid distribution and get everything plugged in. From there I filtered each process and requested various things from our existing chemical network to make the missing fluids we need for advanced glue. Wait, is the chicken gone? I swear I didn't touch him. <laughs> oh, he, oh, there he is. Is it just the render distance or... I think it might be like he goes out of it, yeah. Yeah, he's just so afraid, I guess, of um, potential ramifications for being up here. Anyways, so yeah, over here at Chemistry we have uh, five more machines, four more large chemical reactors and one mixer making us advanced glue. Advanced glue? You have no idea how many times I tried to say that in the intro there, but <laughs> it's probably why it sounds a bit weird. But yeah, regardless, um, we from when we were batch crafting this stuff, we do have about two cells worth of polyvinyl acetate, which is one of the final components we need in the mixer to make advanced glue. So I want to make sure we use this up and we'll just add this in manually to the input hatch. And that should start the recipe. Yeah. And then all we have to do is connect this to this P2P up here. And similar to the rest of the chemical processes that we have, um, for things like polyvinyl acetate, which have no other use other than to be mixed into advanced glue, we are, uh, yeah, we're just using P2Ps and we're not sending them into main fluid storage. The only fluid I think I have in this stage being sent to main fluid storage is methanol. Um, polyvinyl acetate, yeah, bind this together. So we're making methanol down here. Actually, let's get a muffler hatch for this. Or sorry, a muffler upgrade for the for the mixer. That's quite obnoxious. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're making methanol down here and we are sending that back into main fluid storage somewhere over here. I had the server running for quite a while after I finished this thing. Um, but yeah, we should have our advanced glue super tank already here. And it's filling up nicely. It's going to go to 4 million and then just stop the machine. Um, so yeah, basically we're just making methanol into methyl acetate and that is sent... Uh, into fluid P2P here on this side of the mixer 
And then on this side, we're making vinyl acetate and polyvinyl acetate. And that's sent into this fluid P2P here. Two of those combine in the mixer and we have advanced glue. Way more than we'll use for the foreseeable future for all the IV components. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be an issue. That is gonna be an issue for sure. Hmm. Man, so many things to upgrade. I think I'm just gonna AFK. <laughs> that's just the easiest way, right? Just AFK. Just wait for it. Just be a bit patient. We can wait, we can wait. I have plenty of time here. Okay, everyone, so I know it's a bit early in the video to do a massive jump in time here, but yeah, two days later, I've been working in ore processing mostly, but I have lots and lots of things to show you guys, lots of exciting changes around the base. Things I've been meaning to get to for a while, and um, well, the first thing you'll notice here in ore processing is we have many more machines, which is super exciting. <laughs> so um, yeah, just to take you back uh, to remind you guys the situation beforehand, we had, I think, one machine for each stage, with the exception of the centrifuges, which had two machines, two centrifuges. But now, after, well, some AFK, but no, it wasn't all AFK. I did fix a lot of problems around here. We, we now have, for the most part, four machines of each stage. So we have four ore washers, four chemical baths, although these are still yet to be set up. We still have to figure out the chemical bath situation. I've only went with one simple washer and one multi-smelter. These might be increased still, but these are very, very fast processes, like less than a second per operation. Um, so those are going to be last on the upgrade list. Um, but yeah, we now have four centrifuges. We have four maceration stack tier twos. We have four sifting machines, four electrolyzers, and four thermal refineries. And this one has always been blank. This is just a a spare lane for ore processing. So yeah, I've been doing lots and lots of crafting and apologies that I cut most of it out, but um, basically I, I just spent like many, many hours here <laughs> waiting on some stuff. And uh, yeah, I was basically just requesting it. And uh, to my surprise for pretty much every single machine, we were just able to hit the request button, hit the start button. And then uh, yeah, wait for it to craft and plug the machines in one by one. And you know, I did plan to do a big time lapse type of thing, um, like we normally do, but it wasn't too interesting to be honest with you. But this is just a testament to the amount of work and uh, the capabilities that our base now has. Like, the fact that we can now just auto craft all this stuff is amazing. It's so, so good. <laughs> like, yeah, like the blast furnaces, although the freezer needs a bit of work as you saw, <laughs> which we'll get to actually, I want to get that done this episode. Um, the assembling machines, we have alloy blast melters. I fixed a lot of the recipes on the alloy blast melter as well, moved it out of the EBF, and uh, all of the GT++ alloys are now made here. Since it is much faster generally to alloy blast melt straight from the raw ingredients than it is to send through a mixer and then blast furnace and then cool the ingots down. I think a prime example of that is grissium dust. You can mix grissium from carbon, sulfur, lithium, titanium, potassium, and hydrogen gas, and then cook the grissium dust in the EBF at 50 seconds each, and then also 33 seconds to cool down. But alternatively, you can just send all those raw ingredients through the alloy blast smelter, and it gives you the same 50 ingots worth of fluid, and then we're just fluid solidifying, so it's much, much faster this way. So I converted all those ingots into, yeah, alloy blast smelter recipes. So yeah, again, a very minor change, but all these different things definitely, definitely add up to give us some extra efficiency, and it's now starting to pay off. One of the other things I done was optimize our drives in ore processing. So I used the MEIO port that we used, I think it was last episode, 
to clean up the B subnet and I've cleaned up the ore processing subnet here. So all of the drives are now clean. I added a few more super chests down below as well. One of the things I am most excited about is finally getting rid of that maceration PA uh, processing ray, which used to sit right here where I'm standing. Oh, I cannot wait to get these machines up and running here. It's going to be so good when we have so much, so many uh, crushing recipes to do in parallel. I mean, this this subnet right here is unacceptable. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Almost sixty thousand redstone to get processed, and this is only with one miner running right now. So. Mm, yeah, it's a test of patience right now, but it's going to be so worth it. It is going to be so, so worth it. We're making more ZPM circuits right now in graphene. <laughs> oh my goodness, that thing. With the 64 LV macerators, which I still have right here, that thing was was on its knees. That thing was begging to be upgraded. Uh, it was... Yeah, it was horrible, totally inadequate for the job here, but you'll be pleased to know, now checking the subnet, we have completely caught up to the backlog here and there is nothing to be processed uh, granted all the miners are currently offline I think the one on Ganymede is now finished so we need to go and collect that again uh, which I did just move be before the episode started but it's just been so long that um, yeah completed a full operation and both the other miners are currently in this chest right here so we need to go and place those down and I think I will do that in a second Um, but yeah, you'll notice here that the maceration stacks look a bit different to the ones that we have in autocrafting. In the autocrafting build, we have one of the tier 1 maceration stacks, which um, uses stable titanium machine casing. I think I mentioned this before, but it's a very cheap uh, version of the maceration stack. So the tier 1 and tier 2 use the same controller, the difference is the casings and the upgrade chip. So the casings are way more expensive, it uses about 200 palladium per multi-block and we crafted four of them so that's 800 palladium and a whole bunch of platinum as well a couple of hundred platinum and also a bit of Inconel 625 which is a GT++ alloy made from nickel, chrome, nichrome, invar and molybdenum two of those also being some alloys themselves so it's quite a complex process to craft but we have it all in auto craft by now so all we have to do is request it and then the other requirement to make it a tier 2 maceration stack is to give it the upgrade chip, which costs a ZPM circuit, um, something we made for the first time last episode. Also tungsten carbide, which we've not made before, which is just uh, tungsten and carbon dust in a mixer, and then that's sent through the blast furnace. So it's very simple to make, we just had to add a recipe for it. And then four IV blendomatics, which are macerators in and of themselves, and that combined gives you the maceration chip upgrade which you can then just feed to the controller and that combined with the upgraded maceration stack casings turns it into a tier 2. And the tier 2 maceration stack controller can allow us to handle much more recipes in parallel. So because it's tier 2 we have an N number of 8 and because we're running them at EV that is tier 4 so 8 times 4 is 32. So I think, if I'm reading the tooltip here correctly, we can handle 32 recipes in parallel, which is awesome, um, in each multi-block machine, which is how we were able to catch up to the backlog so fast. Um, and yeah, so every machine here is running at EV tier. Um, so we have lots of space to overclock, but honestly, I don't think we need to run any higher than EV tier at the moment. Since in many cases, most of these GT++ machines are much more efficient, both in terms of speed energy usage and in many cases parallel amounts but the upgrades to the base don't stop there before i started working on any ore processing um well actually i requested a few recipes here and there and then during the initial waiting stages for some of the machines i also went ahead and upgraded our multi-block battery so it used to just be the one capacitor layer on the lsc and i think we had a maximum capacity of 4.2 billion eu which sounds like a lot, but with all the passive systems we now have running and with the maximum power draw of our base increasing every single episode, we definitely could do with an upgrade. So you might remember when we took the last of the infrastructure from our old base in the overworld, 
One of the things we were able to gather is the old battery system, the power storage system in the old base. I believe it was in this battery buffer right here. And inside that battery buffer was Lapitronic energy orbs, which we can craft into Lapitronic capacitors. And those Lapitronic capacitors we can add to our multi-block battery to increase the maximum capacity of EU storage. So we had 12 Lapitronic energy orbs, and I converted all 12. And I took the LSC up an extra two layers um, of capacitors and added some borosilicate glass to complete the multi-block again. And so now after the upgrade, we went from 4.2 billion. And um, we do, by the way, we do have, I think, what is this, eight empty capacitors. You can see the difference in texture there. So we have a bit of space to upgrade. And of course, we can make it much, much taller than it is right now and add many, many more capacitors inside. And there's also higher tiers of capacitors, which we cannot afford, unsurprisingly. <laughs> like it goes all the way up to UMV capacitors. And this is just insane. Like, look at the capacity number on that. Look how much EU this thing holds. It's insane. Obviously not cheap, though. I mean, yeah, look at this recipe. It just basically keeps going. It takes eight batteries, eight max tier ba batteries for the Mega Ultimate battery. And then these take eight UXV batteries, plus all this stuff. <laughs> and then this one, just it just keeps on going. Look at this. Look at this all the way down. And now we're at... What are we at? UV here. This one takes the ZPM. We're almost at the point where we are. This is LUV. This is the one after the one we just crafted. And we are all the way down here at, at yeah, the Lapitronic Energy Orbs right here. <laughs> this is what we are using. So yeah, still lots of capability to expand this thing. But after the upgrade, we went from 4.2 billion up to 11.4 billion EU maximum storage. The redstone logic here should work the same way, although I'm not sure what the number is going to be. It used to be about 200 million or 300 million where the turbines used to turn on, um, but it's based on signal strength here. So I'm not entirely sure what the number is now where it detects that it's low on power and that it tells the turbines to turn on and generate us some more. And similarly, the cutoff point for the turbines has changed as well. It used to turn off the turbines at about 3 billion storage. Um, but that was only out of a maximum of just over 4 billion, so yeah, obviously those numbers have changed. It still pretty much works on the same principles, though, where it turns on the turbines when we're low on power and turns them back off again when we have sufficient power in the base. And yeah, as you can see here, it did update the screen, so where yeah, it shows the 11.4 billion EU capacity in the super duper EU battery. So now, before we discuss any of the other upgrades in the base and move the miners, which I want to get done today, I think we really ought to add an extra objective on for today, and that is to fix the vacuum freezer. Now that we have the Vulcanus and eight regular blast furnaces, vanilla blast furnaces, the, the speed to cool down the hot ingots is no longer sufficient. So there's basically three ways to fix this. We can either add more regular freezers, uh, the three by three structures here. We can add a cryogenic freezer, which is the GT++ option at IV. And we could definitely do this. It does take gelid cryothium though, similar to the Vulcanus, which takes blazing pyrothium. This is the cooling equivalent. However, the one I want to go for is the mega vacuum freezer. And for any of you guys who, who have never seen the vacuum freezer before, the mega vacuum freezer before, prepare yourself. <laughs> Look at this. It's, it's genuinely insane. And uh, honestly, yeah, I mean, look at this. <laughs> Where on earth are we going to put put this in the base that doesn't just look completely insane? I mean, this is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think it's a 15 by 15 cube. Like, that is just insane for a multi-block. Where on earth are we going to place that? <laughs> I think we're going to have it underneath somewhere. Um, but... Yeah, I was encoding some recipes and I think we actually can craft this. So to make the mega vacuum freezer, we need 64 regular freezers, right? Se uh, circuit 17 and just a bit of soldering alloy. So I encoded the recipe here for the multi-block controller. So we need 64 of these things, right? And uh, well, to my surprise, we can also craft this. 
And the crafting plan here doesn't actually look that insane. It's a lot of the same recipes. It's just a large quantity of materials. There's nothing really that stands out, to be honest. It's like 1200 Electrum. That's not really a whole lot. That's nothing. 16 Indium. That's also nothing. 400 Platinum. That's nothing to sneeze at, but definitely something we can afford by this point with our uh, robust Platinum line. 192 HV motors. 192 quantum processors, EV circuits. Um, yeah, a bunch of wafers. Honestly, it doesn't look that bad. It's pretty, it's pretty tame. So we're gonna get, request one of these, and to go along with it, we're gonna obviously need to have the machine control, or sorry, the frostproof machine casings. Yeah, the machine casings. And you can see here it takes about 1,100, almost 1,200 machine casing. Let's just request 1200, which is about 6,000 aluminium, and we have 4,000. And uh, check this out, I added aluminium into the Vulcanus, and I had some of it crafting, but I wanted to cancel it just there, and uh, show you the speed of this thing. Look at this. Oh, it's doing energetic alloy right now. Yeah, I think it's making the circuits for the machine controller right now. A bit of um, raw iron as well, or steel, I think that is. It is quick though. Yeah, look at this. 6.35 seconds for 120 aluminium ingots. <laughs> we used to wait a full minute for each ingot right at the very beginning of the game. And this just, it just shows you the power of upgrades and uh, man, these things are so, so good. 120 ingots every six seconds. That's excellent. That's so amazing. So yeah, it should really only take a couple of minutes for us to get that crafted and we can add that upgrade almost immediately here. Um, however, back over here at Ore Processing, one of the things you might have noticed when I was walking around here is that we are missing a few buses here on the machines. And so we're using advanced stocking input buses, which is not something we can craft. So we only have a limited amount. I was able to find one or two more in the platinum line and I exchanged those out with regular stocking buses. So I was able to find a few more to uh, fill in some of the new machines. All the maceration stacks have their own um, advanced stocking bus to be able to pull everything. And on the advice of a couple of you guys, I also switched the advanced stocking bus with regular stocking buses on the electrolyzer, which is kind of necessary here because a lot of these electrolysis recipes um, will only run in multiples of, well, essentially not one at a time. It's all uneven amounts. So like spessartine dust here, if I can find the right key. Spessartine dust is 20 at a time. Um, and so what happens when you have less than 20 is that some of it is just going to sit in the stocking bus here and it's not going to allow any extra dusts to be inserted. So with the advanced stocking bus, it was basically getting trapped and uh, there was some dusts here not being processed and not because there wasn't enough of it, just because there wasn't enough space in the stocking bus. So yeah, we're now just requesting every single dust that we want to electrolyze here. And so we have two on each machine. Okay, so I'm just thinking here, where are we going to place this mega vacuum freezer? Um, I think we want to place it underneath the one that we have, but 15 by 15 is basically going to take take up the full chunk here. I believe the controller is in the very center of the multi-block, right? Yeah, it is. That's a bit awkward, but we can put all the hatches and buses on top of the multi-block and connect it to the same, well, maybe the same power line. I'm not sure. We might have to extend along the LUV power here. We'll figure that out in a second, but yeah, I want to lower it a bit to make it on the same level as this platform and we'll extend it along from these stairs here. There is a couple of Megas in the game, like the Mega Blast Furnace, which is, um, well, a beast in and of itself. <laughs> the Mega Vacuum Freezer, which we're about to build. The Mega Distillation Tower, which uh, isn't quite so big, although I'm not sure why the preview is so large here. I don't know how to zoom this out. What else is there? Mega Alloy Blast Smelter? I had no idea this thing existed. A bit of a funny shape though, um, but yeah, there's there's tons and tons of large multi-blocks which we're going to have to find space for. Mega uh, Chemical Reactor, which is definitely a lot smaller, but I would like to get this at some point. I think it's pretty expensive though. 
Um, there is some other... Oh yeah, fusion coils, that's right. Yeah, we need to make the donut first. Anyways, let's try and get this uh, freezer here centered. Uh, with both the walkway and... Well, I guess we want the controller like right here. In that space. Maybe one higher. Like there. So it would be seven above and seven below. We do want to keep some space for the wiring though. So maybe I'm just going to make it a bit lower regardless. And we can maybe put some stairs down. Yeah, let me just figure this out here. Okay, so I think I got most of this figured out. We just have to get it crafted and put together by now. Um, so yeah, the 64 vacuum freezers have finished crafting. We need to give this circuit 17 in the assembler. Which we will do right here temporarily. I don't suppose we're going to be making like a lot of these things. But um, yeah, there's no need to add a recipe for this, I don't think. And then we'll have to give it the fluid in the input bus. Uh, right here. And that should start the recipe automatically. Okay, well, it started it, but I didn't <laughs> I didn't pay attention to this recipe time. 1,800 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I guess in the meantime, we'll figure out the I.O. here. So I went ahead and extended along the power cable. That's running into an insane transformer, and we're going to want to give that to some energy hatches. I have two IV crafted here, which will take it up to LUV. So we're going to place those right here and here, and then plug in some platinum cable. IV cable. So this takes it up to, yeah, L LUV power for the freezer. And that should be able to handle every recipe that we throw at it at this point in the game. Make sure we remove that block underneath here as well. Um, yeah, so that's the power situation. As for the item situation, um, we're also going to want to have input bus and an output bus, which should be, fin should be finished crafting. Yes, output bus is finished. So we'll plug this in right here and plug this in here. And then we'll, we're going to want um, storage bus, which I also requested. We're going to want an or dictionary filter card. And to be honest, I think this is still the best way to do it, since especially now that we've split off our EBFs into two different subnets. We could also connect the input bus straight into a... Uh, a lime channel here and a red channel but now that there's two of them we would need to have two input buses and that also just kind of complicates things a bit more so we're going to stick to storage bus on the main net this is orange so we're going to put a wireless connector here and just connect it up top to the other vacuum freezer like so i guess just for consistency we'll color this orange as well and connect this down to here to give us some channels. We only need two channels, one for the output bus and one for the input bus. Um, and then, yeah, that or dictionary filter card. Did I craft that? No, I didn't craft it. Yeah, some of you guys commented, but I can really feel the rate of improvement is increasing now that we have... We actually have some infrastructure <laughs> that we can rely on. Like wireless AE and auto crafting and all this stuff just adds up and it's, it's so, so nice. So in here we want ingot hot wild card and this as you guys know will match to any ingot hot in the i think it's is it dollar sign ah yeah they're all hidden from any eye but yeah essentially it's going to match to the or dictionary um name on all the ingots and it's only showing up the bartworks ingots here but yeah the same principles apply whenever there's any hot ingots in the system and um, we want these to be prioritized to be stored here i.e. In the, in the freezer's input. So this is going to be on highest priority, 10,000. And this is also the same. I think I might reduce this to 9999. Just to make sure that everything goes to the mega and then any excess will go here. And then any excess over and above that will just go into storage. Um, but if that happens, then it's time to upgrade the freezers again. Yeah, and we want the storage bus on insert only. And I did, I did save this, right? Yeah, I did save it. High priority. Okay, so that should be all the I.O. sorted out for the freezer. And uh, now all we have to do is build the thing. I was going to build it manually, but that's for suckers. <laughs> we have the multi-block hologram projector, which I'm hoping is going to let us auto-build. Otherwise, I, I am the sucker. 
and I'm going to have to build this manually. But yeah, we're waiting on the machine controller before we can do that. Now, what was it Young3 said earlier in the video? Just AFK. Just wait for it. Just be a bit patient. Yeah, how's that working out for you three? How's that working out for <laughs> I Yeah, I uh, I ended up dropping it down this walkway a bit, just a couple of blocks, uh, just to give us a bit of extra space on top of this freezer. Um, so I think this will work out quite well. And we can always extend this all the way, all the way down. Potentially all the way down to the... ME controller down there. Three, two, one. Out of range. Mega vacuum freezer, yes. <laughs> okay, please tell me the auto build is going to work on this. There is our quest. It's not going to be so complex to build, but it should be able to auto build with uh, shift right click. Oh, nice, it worked. First time. Nice, nice. We've got ourselves a mega vacuum freezer. <laughs> a big chunky boy. A big chunky freezer. And uh, yeah, this is going to be able to cool down lots and lots and lots of hot ingots. And we're trapped inside here. Yeah, I did put a maintenance hatch on the front here as well. So let's do the maintenance. Let's do batch mode. Let's switch this thing on. And uh, let's do the first test. Oh, you know what? I should have had some hot ingots cooling. Or cooking rather, so that we could see how fast the freezer is. The tooltip doesn't tell us anything on the multi-block. Maybe the quest is going to say. Oh, and we get another IV bag. It can handle 256 items. I'm assuming that means it can do it all at once. Well, in that case, how about we look at our first objective, the assembly line, and we'll start encoding some recipes here. First of all, I do want to open this loot bag just out of curiosity, so let's get an extra motor. That's useless, 4x platinum cable. We don't need that at all. Okay, so the assembling line. The machine controller actually doesn't look too bad. Um, it's just IV circuits and some IV robot arms, which is perfectly acceptable. We'll need the assembler machine casing as well, which is not acceptable. <laughs> this is the bulk of the cost right here for ZPM circuits. That's six ZPM circuits and one LUV circuit per machine casing. Plus an ele electric motor IV and a tungsten steel frame box. So this is, yeah, I mean, this is why I was preparing so heavily for this thing. That is the right circuit here, right? Yeah, that's the right circuits. So both of these are um, molecular assembler recipes. Okay, what else do we need for this? I think I can see great machine casing for this. And our preview is gone again. Yeah, this stuff, the great machine casing. We need... Assembler machine casing, that's the one we just encoded. We have the machine controller, input and output buses, input hatches, assembling line casing, data access hatch, and reinforced glass. I think we have reinforced glass. We don't have a recipe for it, so let's add an alloy smelter recipe. Ah, we might as well just do 16 at a time. So this goes in the alloy smelter right here. Okay, next one is the great machine casing, which is very simple. The assembly and line casing is two more IV robot arms each and some tungsten steel. We'll do the assembler version, circuit three. And we'll just do this one at a time for sure because of the robot arms. But we do have a circuit three assembler here. And then data access hatch is just some IV circuits. And that should be all the recipes actually that we need. Um, if you don't count in any of the extra infrastructure to actually plug it in and automate the thing, which um, I think we'll save for next episode because it's quite complex, um, definitely more complex than Nomi Factory, because you basically have to send the items in in order of the recipe. I'll explain all that next episode, but yeah, let's just go ahead and request our assembling line. And this is a variable length. Oh, we're missing some recipes here. I think I'm going to do this 64 at a time. And we have space in our solidifier here. Yeah, it looks like it was one of the ones I missed from when we transferred from the overworld. Okay, so we need to figure out how long we want this thing to be. Let's request our controller, which doesn't look too bad. Another, like, 100 IV circuits. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, let's, let's start this thing. So we need to figure out how long this is going to be. I'm not sure we even have the quest for it yet. Oh, we do have the quest for it, yeah. Okay, so it wants 26 solid steel machine casing. We didn't encode the recipe for this, but I think we actually have it um, because solid steel machine casing is used elsewhere. 
So let's get like half a stack of this. This is just just regular steel to craft this one. The multi block can be five to 16 blocks long. The minimum length depends on the number of components and fluids required by the recipe. A length of 11 will fit 80% of the recipes in GTNH. Yeah, let's not go for any half measures here. Let's just go for the full 16 length. So that means we need uh, 16 assembler machine casings, the one with the ZPM circuits. And I don't, uh oh. Wait, we have all the materials. 800 EV circuits. <laughs> 800 circuits at EV. That's insane. Oh my goodness, that is insane. Look at this. Yeah, again, the crafting screen isn't so large because it's not so complex. It's just a lot of materials. 4,000 platinum. <laughs> oh yeah, things are starting to get insane now. Yeah, 2,000 advanced glue, 10 uh, silicon bulls. Is there anything else of note here? It's really just all the circuits. The circuits is the main thing. But now we have much faster circuit production because of our upgraded circuit assemblers. Um, yeah, look at all those circuit boards there. 33k fine platinum wire, 1200 tantalum wire. I think the issue here is our CPUs are not big enough, so we need to split up the craft. 10k radon, almost 30k carbon dust. Okay, so what else? I just went ahead and requested the great machine casing, which is very, very simple. We also need our data access hatch, which we can request. We'll probably want more than one of these things, but it's just a handful of circuits here. Nothing like the other crafts. And then the other one is the, is this one, the assembling line casing, which is different. This is the one with the two IV robot arms, whereas the ZPM circuits we have to split up. So maybe we should do these ones first though. Well, let's just make sure we can, we can request these. This is uh, gonna be another 16. Yeah, definitely nowhere near as expensive. It's a lot of IV stuff though, IV components, 96 motors. And I suspect a lot of advanced glue. 12 buckets. Yeah, we wouldn't have had enough if we didn't set up advanced glue today. Um, but yeah, the rest of the things here, definitely not as bad. You know what? Let's just go ahead and request this one. And then this will have to split up. So it's going to be 8 and 8. Um, still not a big enough CPU right now. Maybe it's not a wise idea to do everything at once because it's we're going to be bottlenecked on circuits anyway. Uh circuits even though we've upgraded is still our biggest bottleneck um blast furnaces for sure are definitely not the biggest bottleneck now though yeah look at this 16 tungsten at a time and we can probably see our vacuum freezer running now 32 tantalum at a time i didn't see the recipe time for that though but it is luv so it's yeah it's super super quick it's the first time i've seen it on though so it's good to know that it does actually work yeah 27 seconds for eight tungsten and uh, we're probably just bottlenecked by the speed of our blast furnaces now. We're always going to have bottlenecks. Like, no matter what stage of the game we're, at, we're in, there is always, always, always going to be bottlenecks. It's just a question of what are you willing to tolerate? And honestly, I'm pretty satisfied with the state of our base right now. So um, it's just a question of, like, waiting. And I guess in the meantime, I'm going to move the miners. And... Yeah, we need some space for the assembly line, and I, I think it's going to go underneath here somewhere. Perhaps we can just line them up at, on this walkway somehow. Um, plans might change though, so I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I'm just going to move the miners here and uh, request the... Oh, this is almost done. Request the rest of the materials. As you saw, we can afford it. Contrary to my assumption at the beginning of the episode. What do you think, Mr. Chicken? Do you think it's sufficient, the ore processing upgrades? <laughs> so I went ahead and moved all three miners. They are placed in the overworld. 
And um, I actually crafted another Prospector Scanner. Potentially a bit of a waste since we're about to get into LUV and in LUV we can get a reusable Prospector Scanner, which is this one right here. Um, yeah, it does cost a bunch of LUV components, but we're still a while away from that and the other two scanners that we had had broken, so I just made this quick IV one at, with uh, Shadow Metal. And that allowed us to search for some ore veins so that we could place all the miners. As you can see, we've got them all placed in the overworld. Um, I think two are on manganese, which we need for tantalum. I want to replenish our tantalum supply since we used so much of it. And we didn't have too much to begin with. Um, and the third one, I think, is on a... Uh, I just placed it and I already forgot. Oh yeah, that's right, it's on a mica vein. Um, not that we really need mica, but there's a bunch of other stuff around it, so... I mean, yeah, there's 10k mica here, that's going to be enough, but I just placed it anyway, just to have it placed. Because <laughs> it was sitting in the chest doing nothing, so we might as well test this out. Um, so yeah, we have our ender chest backed up here, which is the insert for the miners. And we're going to plug this into the ore processing inserts to get all this processed. We'll be able to check if there's any unfiltered ore here in the overflow chest. However, we... Um, Oh yeah, that's what I want to see. <laughs> it's uh well, it's starting to fill up here, but actually, it's not. It's not filling up at all. That's that's perfect. That means everything that is incoming to the system is being processed by the macerators. Oh, this is so so good. So the macerators was the biggest bottleneck, but um, it might have shifted by. In fact, it's almost definitely shifted, since this is now the fastest process in ore processing. Um, so I suspect maybe we're gonna have a bottleneck here at the centrifuges by now. It may take a few minutes to find out, but I don't think the ore washers are going to be a bottleneck. I I don't think we're going to have an issue with the simple washers or with the multi-smelter. Although we're going to have to keep monitoring this system, of course. The sifting machines should be okay here. We don't sift that many ores, and uh, what we do sift we can do in large quantities in parallel. And similarly for the electrolyzer, we don't electrolyze that many dusts. And it takes a lot of input to get the process going, so yeah, I suspect it's going to be okay at this point with our current uh, resource input rate from just three miners at tier two. The miners still have room to be upgraded, so yeah, that's definitely something we're going to look at doing once we get into LUV. In fact, we can do it now. We only have tier two miners. We can make the tier three miners, but yeah, we're just going to hold off at the moment. So yeah, as it stands, we're currently waiting on the last eight assembler machine casings, and then we're going to have a full 16 length assembly line. Again though, we're waiting on bottlenecks all over the place. Well, not all over the place, it's, <laughs> it's pretty much just the assembler machine that we're waiting on, and some some circuits, but um, yeah, the, the biggest uh, thing is the assembler machine for all these SMDs. And I forgot to check actually if we can make this any cheaper. Uh, you might remember that I mentioned we can potentially upgrade to the advanced SMDs, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's a difficult call to make. The advanced SMDs require higher tier of materials, but it, you also get way more when you craft a single batch, and you need way less to craft a single circuit, so it's kind of questionable whether it's worth it or not. We can also potentially get a cheaper LUV circuit uh, with advanced SMD diodes, but... I don't know, it's, I don't know. It's a difficult call to make, but I guess we're committed now, right? It's already crafted. <laughs> We've already already used the bulk of the resources, and uh, yeah, it's just waiting on some circuits here. Again, though, I think we will put it underneath here, but let me know if you have any other suggestions um, on placement for the assembly line. And of course, we are going to have multiple assembly lines, so it's, yeah, we need space for more than just one. I think here is a is a really good space for it, though, since we're close to the battery. Yeah, how are we doing back here at ore processing? Oh yeah, it's it's not it's not backing up at all. That's perfect. That is precisely what we want to see here. That's awesome. Uh, the only thing we have to watch out for here now is item storage. Some of the drives are now, are now full, but yeah, we have super chest storage for some of the bulk items, and uh, it's going to be an ongoing upgrade process. In fact, I bet we can get the next tier of storage cell, the two fifty six. Anyways guys, I think with that, there's not much left to do this episode, we just have to wait on the craft, and we are going to wrap this one up right here. We can update the objective board though, so we fixed the ore processing machinery. For now, it's still going to be an ongoing upgrade process, but yeah, we, we are definitely able to keep up with our resource input rate. 
We fixed our vacuum freezer. And with just a little bit of extra patience, we will have our assembly line. I honestly can't believe we made it this far. And <laughs> there's a there's a very old pinned post in Discord from, I think, 2022 from Metis, who said, uh, I would never get the assembly line, and here we are. <laughs> or I would never get ZPM, let alone the assembly line. Something something like that. I'll, I'll show it on the screen right now. And uh, we made it. We done it. <laughs> we're almost there. Like, we're inching ever closer to our objective of the tier 7 rocket. And, oh, it's just so good. It feels so good being, actually making some progress now. But, um, yeah, I want to thank you guys once again for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next episode of New Horizons for the assembly line. Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, still a couple thousand SMDs to go. Couple hundred circuit boards. We're close. We're 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 so so close.